All right, we are back, and uh, this is a problem being done by request from YouTube username Ryan Ding. Okay, so uh, this is the 2019 AMC 10A problem number 24. We're going to use a lot of techniques in here. Get your small notebooks ready. Get ready to pause the video to write things down if you're preparing for the competition. Let P, Q, and R be the distinct, that means different, right, roots, okay, of the polynomial here. Now, notice it doesn't say equals zero because they don't need to. A root is an x-intercept. It is a solution to f of x equals zero, right? It is all those things. Okay, so uh, it's the x cubed minus 22x squared plus 80x minus 67. When you see that during the test, you're not going to process that in a meaningful way. Okay, polynomial roots. Got it. That's what you should do. Don't try to read it like I just did. Just gloss over it and keep reading. It is given that there exists real numbers a, b, and c such that 1 over, and now they've switched it to s. So we have 1 over s cubed minus 22s squared plus 80s minus the same thing equal to a over s minus p plus b over this plus c over that. Okay, for all s, that is not an element of the set p, q, and r. Why? Why? You could ask that. Why is this here? What does this mean? First off, an element of is this symbol that looks like this. It looks like a c kind of, and then it gets changed into an e. And if they put a slash through it, it means it's not an element of. And so why would they tell us this? What would happen if it was equal to p? Well, you can see you're going to get zero, right? And because these p, q, and r are roots, this would be one over zero as well. And we can't have zeros in the denominator. That's not allowed. So that's why this is here. What is one over a plus one over b plus one over c? Okay, so the first thing is, this looks an awful lot like something you will either encounter possibly in the Honors Algebra 2 course, possibly in a pre-calc Honors course, or even just regular, and definitely in a calculus course at some point. Um, usually, I think BC would have it before AB, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, so uh, what is it called? It's called partial fraction decomposition. If you want to do research on this, partial fraction decomposition. Decomposition. That is the first concept we will use. I'm going to demonstrate it really quickly so that you can get a feel for uh, how it works. Let's say I have a just a regular quadratic, like 1 over uh, x squared plus x minus 12. And I want to break that down into a over. And what goes here is the factors, right? Notice that minus p would be a factor because p is a root. Okay, so then this would be x plus 4 plus b over x minus 3. I'm not sure why I put parentheses there. I'm too lazy to erase now. Uh, but, okay, so then what? How are we going to get this? Well, what you would do is multiply both sides by the common denominator. That's logical, right? So if I did that on this side, we know that x plus 4 and x minus 3 multiplies to make this. So if I multiplied by that x squared plus x minus 12 here, and I multiplied this side by x plus 4 times x minus 3, what would happen is you would get 1 equals. Now the x plus 4 will cancel here, and you will just have a times x minus 3 plus b times. Now the x minus 3s are going to cancel, and the x plus 4 distributes to become x plus 4. Great, but now how are we going to get those A's and B's? Now we use the power of wishful thinking, kind of. We're just going to let X equal advantageous values. This method is not always taught by every teacher. I have seen teachers do it in a completely different way by systems of equations, but that's not fun, frankly, and this is fairly easy. So all we're going to do is we're going to use our ability to let X take on value. If I let X equal 3, for instance, 3 minus 3 is 0 times A, poof, it's gone. 3 plus 4 is 7, and the 1 is still here. I get 1 equals 7B, and therefore B is 1 seventh. Great. Now what can we let X equal? Well, let's let X equal negative 4. Plug it in here, that disappears because it's zero and it's going to be 
uh, 1 equals negative 7a and a equals negative 1 seventh. Now you found the values that go there, okay? So uh, let's gonna just erase this now. Go back and pause the video and watch it again if you wanna see how it works. But we're basically just picking nice values for x. Okay, with that demonstration of partial fraction decomposition out of the way, we're going to apply that to this one. There's just three factors instead of two. So we're gonna multiply by the common denominator on both sides. And we know this times this times this does make this. We're gonna go a little bit faster now because we did the demonstration. I'm not gonna break down exactly what's happening. You're going to get one equals a times, and just like all three of these are multiplying the entire side, one of the factors is gonna cancel. Also, I'm gonna make a substitution here. I'm gonna go back to using x. I don't wanna use s. It looks like a five when you're writing. If you're writing quickly, just better to use x in my opinion. There's probably a reason they did this, but we're not worried about that right now. So we're just gonna toss an x back in. Now, the x minus p term would have canceled here, but these two would not have canceled with the a term, right? So we're gonna get a times x minus q times x minus r plus the b, and now the, s, the x minus q term would cancel, but these two denominator terms would not cancel when we distributed. And so you would get b times x minus p times x minus r, and finally, C times X minus P, X minus Q. Okay, now that we've done that, we're doing our advantageous values of X thing. So I'm just gonna let X take on um, if X equals Q, or let X equals Q if you wanna say that instead of if. So if X equals Q, this term will go to zero, as will everything in this expression. So will the backside. The only thing left will be the B term, and you will get one equals b times q minus p times q minus r. Okay, great. Now, what are we gonna do with that? There's still a lot of things we don't know. Now we pause, don't be so quick to rush to the next step. Let's think about what we're looking for. We want one over a, one over b, and one over c. We've got a b here and a one here. Put it together, guys. You're gonna divide by b. So you divide by b to go here. Um, by guys, I mean the universal guys and gals both, yes. Okay, because, uh, yeah, so then here we go. We're going to cancel and get this. Uh, and we're going to have 1 over b equals the product of these two. Now, because we've done that one, we can guess what's going to happen with the rest, right? If I let x equal r now instead, this expression will go to 0, r minus r being 0. This one will too, but the back one won't and you're going to get one over C equals X minus P times X minus Q. Uh, lastly, we will let X equal P, and then this term will go to zero, this term will go to zero, all of that is a zero now, and you're going to get one over A is equal to, uh, oh, it shouldn't be an X, I'm sorry, I changed the X, my bad. We'll just change that real quick. It should have been an R because we let X equal R. R minus P, R minus Q. So one over A, now this is going to be when X is equal to P, so it'll be P minus Q. Again, we're just dividing by A and the two factors are what's left. So we're gonna get P minus Q times P minus R. Okay, great. Well, we got the things we want. We want these three things. We just need to add them, right? This shouldn't be so bad. When we add them, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this. So I'm gonna get Q squared minus RQ minus PQ uh, plus RP, okay? Then the second one, when I add it, the one over A, I guess we're doing it in a weird order, that's fine. We're going to get a P squared um, a P and a negative R is negative PR, a negative QP, and a plus RQ. Finally, with the top one, one over C here, distributing, I'm going to get an R squared term. We're gonna get a negative QR, a negative RP, and a plus PQ. We should get some cancellations here, right? So uh, negative RP and positive RP, those are gonna cancel. I've got positive PQ and negative QP, those will cancel. Negative QR and positive RQ, those will cancel. What do we have left? Don't lose anything, you've got Q squared, you've got P squared plus Q squared plus R squared minus, 
and we're going to have one PQ term, one PR term, um, and one RQ term. Okay, so, well, why, these all have negatives, and there's a name for this. Your brain hopefully has picked up on exactly what we're going to do next, but maybe not because it is a little bit more advanced technique of Vieta's formulas. So you'll want to learn Vieta's formulas for quadratics. And if I take the negative out of here, it's negative PQ plus PR plus RQ. Well, what is that? Well, glad you asked. These are the what? These are the roots. And in Vieta's formulas, we will commonly call these the pairwise products of the roots. So the pairwise, meaning I paired them up, P with Q and P with R, and Q with R. There's three pairs you can make. This is the sum of the pairwise products of the roots. I'm not going to prove to you exactly what's at stake here, but um, we will make the statement so that you understand what we're getting it from. If I take this expression, x cubed minus 22x squared plus 80x minus 67, and I set it equal to zero, okay? The pairwise, the sum of the pairwise product of the roots is this coefficient, the coefficient of the linear term, the x term, and it's going to be that over this one, which is 1. You're going to get 80. This is 80. So now what? Now we've got the sum of the squares of the roots minus 80. Hmm. We still don't, we don't know what the sum of the squares of the roots are. How could we create the sum of the squares? How could we create roots that get squared? Well, what if we decided to add the roots together. Because the sum of the roots, as you might know, is going to be the negative uh, quadratic coefficient over the leading coefficient. And so that's going to equal 22. And if I was to square both sides, I would generate a p squared, q squared, and r squared, and some other stuff. But maybe we can work with it. Let's see what happens. What else are we going to do? Sit there and be paralyzed with fear? No, try it out. See what happens. Okay, so we're going to square both sides. Over here, you will get p squared plus q squared plus r squared as desired. You're also going to get the p distributed to each of these. It's going to give you a pq and a pr, right? Give it as taking the p and distributing it back to all three terms. Then take the q and distribute it to all three terms. Then take the r and distribute it to all three terms. When you take the Q and distribute it to the P, you get a second PQ. So we're just going to get two PQs. And then when I did the P times Q and the P times R, I had an RP term. When I distribute the R back to the P, I will get a second RP term. If you're not sure how this works, just go ahead and set them up side by side, right? I'm running out of space here, but you'll have to put another copy of it there and just distribute the P to all three, the Q to all three, and the R to all three. But I kind of wanted to do it mentally in my head. It saves a little bit of time. It's what I would have done on the test. And so uh, then we're going to get another one of 2PR and also 2QR. How do we know we get two of each? Again, when I distribute the Q to all three terms, I get a QR. When I distribute the R to all three terms, I will do R times Q and get a second QR. Notice that this is two times the what? We called it the pairwise, that is pairwise product of the roots. And we already know its value is 80. When we double it, it's 160. So then we know what this is. This is 484. You should have your squares memorized from 1 to 30. I mean, you should, yeah. Sometimes I'll forget one, like 23 squared is 529, but usually I have them all down. Um, so make sure you review it for the test so you can quickly calculate during the test. So 484 equals this, and this is written here. That is P squared plus Q squared plus R squared plus 2 times 80, which is 160. We now move the 160 over. You will get 324 is the sum of the squares of the roots. And all we're going to do now is plug that value of 324 here. We will subtract 80. 324 minus 80 equals 244. 
I hope this helps if you're the one that requested the problem. And if you weren't, I hope it helps you as well. Again, the topics we covered, partial fraction decomposition. We used Vieta's formulas. We used just an idea that I don't want to keep S because it looks like five when you're writing quickly. And I have made the mistake of thinking it was a five after I'd written it as an S. I just don't want to get into it. So I just swap it back to X again. Okay, we also learned about the element of and not an element of. And that's about it. Everything else was just progression of thought and pausing to notice this B here and a one here. And if I divided, I would create one of the things I would like to have. We also learned a shortcut method for resolving partial fraction decomposition. That is letting the X take on advantageous values. I hope this video helps you guys. Like I said, I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good night.